This is one tight feed. Whew. Okay guys, so if you saw that last video that I did where I had to put an inner tube in one of my ATV tires, you will see I had a hell of a time trying to break the bead on that ATV tire. What you saw there was just a little clip of it. I worked on that so long to try to break the bead with the Harbor Freight um, tire changer. So after I was done with that, I said, there has to be an easier way. I don't know what was holding that thing on so, so tight. So I went to the internet and uh, after some further search, I found out that ATV tires are the hardest beads to break. They have a, um, an extra ridge on the bead that hold, helps hold it on a little bit better. Now you'll also see in that video, and I really hope you check it out because there was some good information in there, but you'll see once I did finally get that tire off the rim, it was full of water. The whole rim was completely rusted inside, which I'm sure was part of the reason why it was so hard to uh, break that bead. So I wanted to change um, uh, all the tires on the ATV just because if there was water in that one, I figured there's water in these and if they're rusted out, I want to clean them up. But I did not want to struggle trying to uh, get it off again with the, uh, the Harbor Freight uh, tool here. Um, I mean, I bought this thing years ago. It served me well. I mean, I've changed um, tires on the uh, landscaping trailer. I've changed my zero turn mower tires. I've done car tires. Never had a problem. The problem with the, the ATV tires, when you go to break the beat, it keeps slipping off the, uh, the sidewall. And um, you'll see in that video how I eventually got it done, but it was way too much of a struggle. After researching and looking, I came across a tool called the Bead Buster. I uh, looked at their information on their website and it seems pretty legit. So I got the Bead Buster here and we are going to remove this tire. Now keep in mind, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this tire. It's not dry rotted, there's no punctures, it, it doesn't leak, it holds air. I strictly want to do this for maintenance to see if there's rust inside of this. So I want to take the rest of them off. So we're going to try this bead buster now. The goal of this video is to open the package from scratch with no edits. Uh, and when I say no edits, I mean no jump cuts. You know what a jump cut is. That's when you're watching a video, a guy's trying to perform a task. You see he starts struggling, all of a sudden the video cuts and, and it comes to the solution of you know uh, what he's doing in there. Believe me, we've all done it. I've done it. Nobody wants to sit there watching a half hour of you struggling to try to get a, I don't know, a rotor off of my truck. Uh, you know, so we edit that out and we get right to the final reveal. Of what we do. We're going to unpackage it together and we're going to see how well this works. Uh, hopefully works as advertised. So here it is. Brand new package. Hasn't even been opened yet. Here comes the unpackaging of it. Let's see everything that's in here. Now I got the whole kit. Oh, nice, nice pair of gloves. Looks like some tire spoons. Not sure what that is. Okay. Okay, let's open everything one at a time here. Lubricant paste. I think you mix this with water. Um, again, because I don't want to edit the video at all, I'll mix this up later. I have some soapy water here for, uh, for this job. We're going to use that for now. I don't want to edit this video at all because I, I don't want you to think I did this job already. I broke the bead, figured out how to use this, and then just came back here for the big reveal. The purpose of this video is to see how this thing works out of the box for the first time with a completely inexperienced novice like me. So I apologize if the video takes a little bit long and just opening up the package and stuff like that. Okay, so here's the bead buster. It's the XB450, which is what they recommend for these ATV tires. 
And I will look at all these directions later. But I did my research on how this thing works. And I'm going to just put the tire spoons aside for now. Hopefully I got all my tools so I don't have to pause it and run away or do anything like that. Okay. So, the first thing I am going to do is release all the air out of the tire. I'm going to do that by removing the valve stem, or the guts of the valve stem, I should say. Draining down, let's get some soapy water on the rim. We're going to get it all the way around. Okay. Now I'm going to take my bead buster here and Make sure that that's backed all the way out. And I'm going to back this out. Okay, that's pretty empty. So my understanding is, okay, good. You back that out all the way. Now, on these really rusted ones, from my understanding, with these ATV tires, you might have to do it in a couple different places. That's what was explained to me. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to shove it. Actually, let's, let's get it right in line with the camera so you can see. Now, what do we got here? It's 1127. This is the start point. So we're going to get that right under the rim. I'm going to hold it there. I got my three-quarter three quarter inch impact. <laughs> see what you don't anticipate here? That bar being in the way. So let me tighten this by hand a little bit. Again, I'm trying to do this without running around getting different tools all the time. Okay, now that's supposed to be straight up and down just like that. So luckily I was able to tighten that and get that in a completely vertical position up and down. Might even be a little bit too much. Because the idea is we want to come right down on that bead and break it. Okay, so that looks good. Now the idea is to come down and this should just break this bead. Let's see how this works. I got it on the lowest setting. Okay, it popped off. See, this is why I want you to see this in real time. I want to see exactly how this works. that on again see normally all this would be edited out of the video but you need to see how this works properly let's get that under the rim again I'm gonna hold it in there tight this time hold that in there tight All I wanted to do was not have to run around for tools. No, I'm not going to be able to get that in there. See? We'll do better next time. Okay, so this time, let me hold it in here a little bit more so it doesn't pop out. Did not pop off yet. Gotta 
get a three quarter inch hand wrench. why you wouldn't use one of these Harbor Freight tire changers because this gets in the way. I don't know if it should be short enough to play. Let's just go off and see. Now, I'm still not going to be able to get in there. Okay. really hoping this would be a one two three job okay so I was able to get that off let's loosen it up let's come to a different spot get that under get that under your rim really good Any editing, it'll be a little fast forwarding through this little bit of wrenching, but you'll see that I didn't do any jump cuts. Okay, so we got that straight. Let's get this in the forward position, wrench it down in a different area. Not going as planned. Tell you what. Let's bring it down here. Okay, you see, no pausing, no jump cuts on the video. into the wheel a little bit more.
All right, I wanted to wait for the compressor to go off because I want you to hear it pop. You see, I tried in one area, it pushed it down a little bit, but now it's holding up again, so I moved it. Not quite. Get our third area here. the other tires the front tires of this ATV and hopefully my user experience will help me a little bit more I think on the first one I think it's very important that you keep that bead buster very vertical maybe slightly tilted in there was one time on here I was forcing it a little bit much and I think I had it tilted too much and I tore it pretty good when I get it off I'll show you See, comes right off. Okay, so let's see if I can show you the little damage I did here. It's not that bad. It looked worse when it was being pressed down. See, I tore through a little bit. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to buy another inner tube for this tire, but that's okay because I got one in the other. I don't know if you could see that. See, right there, it bit in. So listen, I wanted this to be an honest review of what this was like to open this tool from the scratch, never using it before and seeing how it works. I think it probably works pretty good once you get used to it a little bit. I should have watched myself a little bit on this one, but I was rushing and these tires haven't been removed. That ATV is a 1990 Yamaha Big Bear. These tires have never been removed from that thing. That said, this has been very well maintained. If you watch that last video and you see when I had this off, this was full of rust. And that was my concern that was gonna happen here. So I just pulled off a perfectly good tire. Um, and I'm gonna put it back on. And if I have an air leak here, I'll get another inner tube. But I'm going to clean the rest of this rim up, put some protectant on it, and, uh, and then I'll remount it. But I'm going to shoot a little bit more video when I do the two front wheels to see, now that I've had a little experience with the tool, to see if the second time around is a little bit uh, easier. Okay, so I got both of the front tires off now. We're going to give this a try. And this time we're going to work only on the floor so I could get that... Um, so I can get that impact wrench on there to tighten it up. So let's take the valve stem out. Okay, get it nice and lubed up. Now this time, I am gonna be a little bit more careful Get some 
more of that air out so I can really get under that lip there. So you want to back that out so you can get under there on an angle. You see, that got in there. Now once that's in, tighten down this one. Okay, get that till it's vertical. A little bit more. This time I'm not going to go too much or too fast. And if it doesn't want to pop, I'm just going to move to a different area. The way it's supposed to work. I like that. I'm telling you, I think this thing is a great tool. For all the reviews I saw on it, I was just an idiot on the first one. Sitting there trying to rush to get a video for you guys because I wanted you to see it in real time. So let's get this one on now. See, underneath, see, see that, lips underneath. Let it tuck in, see it's tilting a little that way, we're gonna keep coming. Right there, right when it's nice and vertical. I can see already this is gonna break right away now I don't know if you saw it when I did the other side I put a knee on here and I put my foot on here to take a little pressure where I tore that other one so I think that that's a good idea okay now you see that's getting a little bit tight and I don't want to tear into it so I'm gonna back off and that's okay that we back off a little bit. The instructions say that. And then you move over a little bit. See it one more time? I do. I think it's a good way to show how once you get used to using a tool, you learn the tricks of the trade. You can see that first one was a little sketch. Moved up. Bead buster insert. Insert, forward. Now before the compressor goes off, let me talk a second. When I am done with this, these impacts, these are making these bolts hot. I'm definitely gonna put a little bit of uh, heavy duty grease on these. They came with it, they had some lithium grease on them. I'm gonna do that again and run the threads through. Probably a good idea to do that every once in a while. This one I'm not going to force it because I know it took two turns last time because the channel here is thicker. You got a further area to go. And I don't want to take the chance of tearing another wheel, so we're going to come to a different area. 
I think this is just a prudent way of doing it with these ATV tires. I want to get the other uh, tire back on this one and see if it holds there with that little bit of damage that I did on it. If not, I'll get an inner tube. It's not a big deal. So I took this outside. I soaked it down. I hosed it off real good. I knocked off some of the loose rust. And then just to protect it a little bit more, I threw a, uh, a polish on it. This uh, coning product, spray polish, uh, works similar to like a, like, like a spray wax. You know what I use it for? It's good is um, on my countertops. Uh, quartz or granite countertops, it polishes them up real nice, but it really, really protects coatings really good and gives it a nice slick surface. And then I sprayed a thin layer of uh, surface shield just where the rust areas are, just to protect from any uh, further rust on there. So just keep that in mind if you have any rust or corrosion, you definitely want to protect that in that moist environment. So let's try to get this uh, wheel back on here. You know what? Hang on. I saw a video where you could actually help seat this with the bead buster. Let's see how that works. So I think the idea was put it on there and get that fastened down and keep that loose. So that'll keep that end in. See, now once you got half of it on, it's usually a pretty good sign that you can get the rest. You just got to make sure you're into the drop well there. And then, boom. So, yeah, I think that helps a little bit. It holds it in place, similar to like putting a pair of uh, vice grips on there. Now, let's see if there's any chance that this thing is going to hold there with that, with that tear I got in there. Besides, this is always satisfying hearing the bead pop. Oh yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna pop. I already see it. There's the bottom bead. Here comes the top. Right by me, right by my left hand here. Let's see how that damage then is looking on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where the tear was. My fault, user error. I would not blame this on the bead buster. I'm gonna have to get an inner tube for this, but. Right there. See a little bit of a tear, see, rip there and rip there. There we go. She's sealed and she's gonna pop. See if I can open. Okay. And I'm gonna jump, because I always do. So my final thoughts on the bead buster. I like it. I think it's a good tool. I, uh, I would definitely go careful and watch how much it's bending into that sidewall so you don't have the, you know, tear out like I did. 
The only thing I would think better, when this compresses, you see, there's only this little, what is that, about three quarters of an inch wide, maybe a little bit more. That's all that's pressing down on your sidewall, is this bit. The only thing I would think may be different is maybe have a, uh, like a kick, you know, for like a 16 inch wheel, a 20 inch wheel, 12 inch wheel, whatever, that has like a little metal plate that you put underneath that kind of follows the contour of the rim. So there's more surface area that presses down on it. So as that's pressing down, so I don't know, that's, that, that's my only thought that I think would be a little bit of an improvement. Uh, otherwise, I think it's a great tool. Certainly better than uh, busting your butt the way I did last time. Uh, I like mounting and dismounting the tire with my Harbor Freight thing, but as far as busting the bead, I love that thing. That was a great little tool. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out the one prior because there was a lot of good information on there on installing the inner tube uh, in that one. And you can see how I really struggled uh, breaking the bead uh, on that one. So that's it. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. Thanks.